Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. This is part nine of my fitness database series. We're building a fitness database. I'm building a fitness database for me to track food and exercise and all that good stuff. And even if you don't care about fitness, well, this will still benefit you because I'm covering lots of cool stuff that applies to any Microsoft Access database. So go watch parts one through eight and then come on back. All right, I got one more little list of food that I want to load in here. And it's just this little simple list here, which is just a food name, calories, and protein. So we're going to do the same trick we did last time real quick. I'm just going to create query design, bring in my food table. This time I'm not worried about using the query because I don't have categories on all these and they're all different. So it's just food name and then calories and then protein, the fields that I care about. I'm gonna go into this mode here, right? Spreadsheet mode, data sheet mode, sorry. I'm gonna select what I want from here, copy it, come down to the end here, select these three, let's call them cells, and then paste, and there we go. That's how you get data nice and easily in there. Save changes, no, we're not gonna save that query. Requery this list, and now you're gonna see I got a bunch of stuff in here that I just have to go through now and put um, put categories on. And you can see I got a couple of duplicates, like provolone cheese here. Now, I mentioned last time we're gonna build our own delete button, okay? I'm gonna put it on this form. It's one extra step. I, I, it's too easy, I think, to let them delete stuff right from here. Although, if you wanna put the delete button here too, that's fine. I'm just gonna stick it on this form for now. Maybe later we'll put, a, we'll put one down here too, but I got a specific way of doing deletes. All right, I like to control the delete. I don't like to let the users do it from the form. So I'm gonna come over here. We're gonna turn on data, we're gonna turn allow deletions to no. Okay, they have to use my button, which is gonna be this button here. Because I like to do a certain, certain kinds of things, certain weird stuff that you might not have seen before. Okay, this will be my delete button. Whoops, delete button. Okay, now. Right click, build event. Now there is a way, you can turn this off. There is a way you can do this just with the form, with the do command, run command, delete, all that stuff. But I like to do it in the background using SQL. I think it's just more efficient and I get you get better results this way. So first we'll check to see if we actually have a food item. So if is null, food ID, then exit sub. You get nothing to delete. In fact, you could hide the delete button if you want to in the on current event but that's up to you. Now, next we're gonna say, are you sure you wanna delete this item? So we're gonna say, if not, are you sure, right? And then we'll say in here, delete, and then let's put the description in here, the food item, and then a question mark, and then the prompt title will be delete, like that, right? Then exit sub. So if not, are you sure? If you're not sure, if they say no or cancel, so that delete, it'll back out. Now, next thing is, just in case they happen to be editing this record, we need to save it to the table so we can properly delete it. Me.dirty equals false. All right, now here comes the magic. We're gonna use SQL to delete this record. So, current db.execute, delete from food t, where food ID equals, and whatever the food ID is on this form that actually deletes it from the table. All right, there's a little spot in the video right at this spot here. Sammy let me know that uh, there's, it, it's missing video. So I'm just going to just play it and, and follow along. So that part there is where we do the actual deletion. And now we're gonna close the form, right? Do command close AC form. Me.name means whatever the current me, whatever the current form is, that object. Nothing fancy there. AC save yes in case you got any design changes. I've gone over that a million times. But before we do that, we are going to, what do we, what do, we do? Come on. I'm, I'm sure I'm telling you what it is in the video, but I can't remember. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to requery the food list form. Okay. So if the food list form is loaded, then we're going we're gonna to go forms food list F record set requery. Okay, and I'm gonna pause this here real quick. Oh, there we go. Okay, I, I caught back up. I think right here, we're back to the regular video. Let's see. 
we do a record set yeah re okay all right all right we're good I'm, all right back to the regular scheduled program <laughs> and sorry about that if you do a record set requery, it doesn't requery the whole form and put you back up at the top. It requeries the form and it reloads the records, but it leaves you at the position that you're in. It doesn't move the cursor position. So you're on, you stay on the same record. And if you were on a deleted record, it puts you on one right next to it. So let's say you've scrolled all the way down to P and you delete something, you'll still stay down there near that P item, right? All right, here's a video where I teach you more about that. It's called Requery in Place. It uses record set dot requery. And if you want to learn a little bit more of the SQL language with access, go check this out. Of course, I have a full SQL seminar. I'll put a link to that down below. In fact, I got three different SQL language seminars that teach you all the different commands and stuff. And I also have an SQL server seminar. I got lots of stuff on my website if you want to learn this stuff. And one more good video if you want to learn more about that current db.execute, go watch this. There's run SQL and execute, two different commands. They both have their own pros and cons. This video describes them. All right, so that's our delete code. And we could easily put something similar in the other form too, but I, don't, I like that extra little step that they have to make to open up the item and delete it from there. I don't like to make it too easy to delete, to delete stuff. <laughs> All right, save changes. Now, let's say uh, we wanna delete this duplicated provolone here. All right, hit delete. Are you sure? Yep. And see, it kept you right in that general area. Okay. And here's another one. Beans, black beans, cup, right? Delete that one. Are you sure? Yep. Kept you right there. So you can start from the top. Um, I'm going to keep these two separate avocados because th these are the stats for actual avocados. This is a stat. My wife buy these buys these avocado trays, which is like a mashed up avocado. And they come in, in four ounce trays. And they must add something to them because there's more calories <laughs> for the protein that you get. But they are delicious. But we just got to go through and put these into different categories like this. And then save that. See? Banana. I'm going to delete that. That's a duplicate. And so on. Right? Berries, one cup. Let's put this in the fruit category. What else we got? See, stuff like this, you might want to... Put after update events in some of these, like cereal here, for example, that should go into grains. As soon as I pick grains, you could refresh the record at that point. I think I'm gonna, I think I kind of like that. See, like I said, sometimes you discover this stuff as you're doing it. So just all you need here is a quick after update event. Just put a me dot dirty equals false in whatever fields you want it to automatically and quickly update like that one. Maybe the name, oh, I don't know. See, now I'm, now I'm torn because now I want to, I, I do want to do the ones over here where it's calories, protein, and so on. Mm, okay, and since we're going to do that, let's not do it in a traditional event procedure. Let's make a, a function for it. So I'm going to have a public function. Let's call it save record. And then in save record, we'll put the me.dirty equals false. We'll get rid of this. Right. And then all we have to do is I'm going to resize this so you can see this better like that. All we have to do now is I'm just going to pick the fields that are over there. So that's that's picked and then hold the shift key down. This guy, this guy, this guy. So if any of those are changed, the after update event can be equals save record like that. And then that will call this. See how easy that is? All right, debug compile. And let's test it. Let me resize this so it's back here. Okay. All right, let's try it. Save changes, yes. Let's come into here. Let's put this in the frozen dinners category and you can see it automatically quickly updates over here and it doesn't confuse your users. See, grains. Change protein to 22 and it instantly updates. See, and I forgot what that was. We'll put it back to 18. Okay, undo. <laughs> See, it's these little things. You just, you, you, I want to get all the little things out of the way before we start getting into more big stuff. What, what's next on the list here? Let's see what we got. Oh, another thing I was thinking of when you go to add new. Okay, if I add ham sandwich, and then I hit the save button, it it does it, but it doesn't do anything over here. Okay, in fact, you have to manually hit the requery button to find your ham sandwich. Where is it? Uh, there's a the ham sandwich. 
Okay, so I want to kind of do something similar to what the, what the delete button did, okay, is we're going to save it, do a record set, or do it, we're going to do a regular requery of this, but then find that ham sandwich and highlight it. So when you save it over here, it updates and shows it over here. Okay, and we'll do that in tomorrow's video. So, tune in tomorrow. Same bad time, same bad channel. Yeah, I didn't put the Batman screen up there. I should have. But uh, we'll cover that tomorrow. So, that's going to be your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow for part 10. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject. And you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.